Okay, uh, today's video is going to be a little bit different. I kind of want to rant a bit at the start here, but I'm not going to go too far into it. Sometimes it bugs me as a, as a commercial beekeeper, a full-time beekeeper. I'm into my hives every day as often as possible. And I hear a lot from beginner beekeepers and hobbyists about the problems that they're having. Um, and I hate to see people struggle to keep their bees, but I think people can help themselves a little bit more than they do just by being more hands-on, into your hives more, and just trying to get a better understanding of what's going on all the time. And I get it, um, not everyone has all the time and they can't be into their hives every day. And a lot of people tell me that they can look at their hives all they want, but uh, it doesn't help if they don't know what they're looking for, which I totally understand. So today, I'm going to get break it down to three tips um, that I'm going to show you how to do that I think if you can do these things often, uh, you'll be well on your way to succeeding as a beekeeper. The first thing we're going to learn today, how to see eggs. If you can see eggs in your colony, you know that you have a queen there. Second thing, understand when your bees are going to swarm. And the third thing is mites. You need to be looking for mites all the time. Okay, let's do it. Number one, spotting eggs. This is a routine inspection. And when I first go through my colonies, the first thing I'm doing is looking in those frames of brood, trying to find eggs to make sure I have a laying queen. So I'll show you how that's done. Okay, this is my brood chamber. I took the honey super off, queen excluder on top of the brood chamber. Set that out front. And this is where all the brood in the colony is. My queen's gonna be down here. And this is where I'm gonna find eggs. Take away an outside frame here to start. When you look for eggs in a colony, um, you should be looking for the sort of empty space around where the brood is. This is capped honey to the outside, honey here, and brood all in the center. This is capped brood that you can see here. And in what seems like those empty cells all around, there's actually gonna be developing bees, uh, hopefully eggs and larvae. And I can see right away that there's lots of, lots of eggs down in this one. So I'm gonna switch to a close up here and show you exactly what they look like. Eggs in your frame look like um, look like tiny little grains of rice. But they're sticking up on their end. They're white and they're easiest to see against the dark background of the brood cells. But as long as you can spot the eggs, you know that you've had a queen in here laying within the last three days. So if you can spot eggs, you can catch problems faster um, and you can diagnose your hive a lot more efficiently. <laughs> Okay, my second tip is stop swarming. Um, so to do that, we need to recognize when the queens are starting queen cells and take action to stop that swarming behavior. And right away in here, I did see the start of some queen cells. So you need to be able to recognize what queen cells actually look like. And these ones are just beginning. So they're down along the bottom of this frame right here. And those are just starting. And I'm gonna try and get a gonna try and get a close-up shot in there so you can see that uh, this queen has actually laid eggs in these queen cells uh, as they start to develop a new queen so that this colony can swarm. Mm. 
So that's the very start of that behavior that's going to let them raise a new queen and then the colony will actually divide themselves with that old queen and about half the bees will fly away to try to start a new hive somewhere else and that's that's what we call a swarm. So looking through a different colony I did find some swarm cells that were a little further developed and this one has royal jelly and a larva in the bottom of that cup. I'm not sure if you can really see that. So we're right at the start of that behavior taking place. So I caught it in time, which is great. And now I'm going to take action to prevent the bees from doing that. And all I really want to do um, is tear down all those queen cells that they've started here. So I'll go through this colony, find anything like this, tear them down, and then give them more space. Okay, I shook down all those frames and destroyed any of those developing queen cells. I'm going to release this queen. I'm going to put a queen excluder on here and then a honey super or honey box right on top of that. There she goes. And down between the frames. Okay, here's a frame uh, I've got uh, with more swarm cells. And these ones are capped over. They're probably more commonly what uh, you would associate with swarm cells. So here they are. So the trick is you got to come back and check on your bees. You can't just leave them like this. Um, this hive showed signs of swarming behavior. Um, so they could easily get back into that behavior even though I've given them more space and torn down those queen cells. I really recommend um, get into your hives every 10 days. This time of year, you know, late May, early June, through the month of June really, the bees are in that mode where they might want to swarm. Um, so if you can check on them every 10 days, that doesn't give a new queen enough time to develop before you're in there and you can take actions to stop it. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is varroa mites. And I'm not going to dive too deep into it because it's a pretty complex topic. I'm just going to show you one technique to find varroa mites in your colony to get an idea of their levels. Are they out of control or are they somewhat under control? Okay, what you need to know is that mites are in the brood chamber because they reproduce inside capped brood. So that's where I'm going to find the mites. I'm going to ignore the honey boxes, go straight to the brood chamber, and sample bees out of there. Um, don't sample your queen. I found the queen, put her in this cage, and I set her safely aside. So I'm going to find frames like this, or some other ones with brood on them. Frames like that. And these are the bees that I'm going to take for my sample. You know, any bee supply stores are going to have things like this. It's um, two plastic jars. It's two, it's two plastic jars and they're separated by a screen. Um, that screen's big enough for mites to move through but not bees. And in the bottom jar, I've got some fluid here. And uh, in this case, it's actually windshield washer fluid because it has alcohol in it. But you should use um, any kind of isopropyl, like rubbing alcohol is good. If you have access to strong ethanol, you can use that. But it's going to kill the bees and the mites. And then I'm going to separate the bees and mites in here. Okay, so just the, the jar with the liquid in it. And I'm just going to take bees off of these frames. I had about one inch of alcohol in the bottom and um, enough bees to sort of overflow that is about a half a cup. That's what I'm looking for. I've done this so many times. You can actually shake bees and measure with a scoop and scoop them in here. That's probably the best thing to do. Now I'm gonna shake it up. I shake this up for a couple minutes. And so all the mites inside of here will come off of the bees that they were on and uh, we'll be able to see them in this fluid. We'll get an idea of how many mites are in this colony. 
So a half a cup of bees that's in here is about 300 bees. That's how many I've sampled. Okay, and have a look in here. So I actually counted um, nine mites in this sample of about 300 bees. So that's about three mites per 100 bee. And that's right at the level where I need to be concerned and doing something about it, uh, which I plan to, uh, but that's another video entirely. So don't ever let anyone tell you that you don't need to worry about mites for any amount of time because they're easy to look for and you're better off knowing what's going on than not knowing. If you can make use of those tips, especially spotting eggs, checking for swarm cells, you know, every week or every 10 days, you'll be well on your way to having a successful first year or two keeping bees. And looking for mites, I usually do that uh, once a month. Try and keep an eye on, keep an eye on every hive and understand what's going on uh, as often as I can.